everyone, this is Madeline and Holly, and in today's video we'll be talking about the history of African American hair through the lens of four films directed by the auteur Spike Lee. Number 1, Malcolm X. This is Spike Lee's most well acclaimed biopic, starring Denzel Washington as Malcolm X. The film covers Malcolm's life as a con man and after he converges to Islam, which is set during the Civil Rights Movement. The film starts out with the critical scene of Malcolm getting his hair conked by Shorty, Spike Lee himself. Shorty goes on to say, <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I'm holding, but it's heating. Gotta make it straight. Well, all right. The conking in the barbershop allows the audience to know that being white is the most important attribute Malcolm wants to showcase. Spike Lee shows Malcolm getting his hair conked because his hair was and still is a defining trademark of African American culture. Malcolm was willing to display a physical difference in how he wanted to be judged compared to other African Americans at this time. Malcolm used his conked hair to help disassociate himself from his African American heritage even after his mother, who was a mix of white and black, married a darker African American to keep the heritage and skin color in the family. This dissociation of African American culture that had originally kept them unique to the rest of society was extremely painful. Straightened hair requires pressure and heat, and like straightening, heat from harsh chemicals causes a burning sensation that eventually straightens and lightens one's hair. Conking or relaxers are said to have been around since the 1800s. That person goes through excruciating pain to look a little different because they aren't able to change their skin color. They do the next best thing to change the color of their hair and denapify it. Number two, Crooklyn. Spike Lee's 1994 film Crooklyn is known for being a biopic of Lee's childhood. However, he never claims that to be true. The film centers around a young girl named Troy and her relationship with her family while living in Brooklyn, New York in 1973. Troy and her mother's relationship specifically is noticed through how they style their hair in a similar fashion. However, Troy's braids are seen as childish by her aunt. The most significant part about Troy's hair is when Aunt Song takes notice of it. Ow! No, now don't tell me you got the nerve to be tender-headed with these naps. <laughs> What's those things you and your mother had? Beads and braids. Beads and braids. Lord have mercy. According to S. Craig Watkins, edited by Paula Massoud, Aunt Song's observation suggests her class pretensions in her assessment of the young girl's appearance. Aunt Song wanted to live her life in a more high-class fashion, and her way of seeing who is at her level is by her strictures on hair, clothing, skin tone, and behavior. How Troy styled her hair wasn't good enough for Aunt Song's standards, so that is why she took them out. African Americans used beads and or other types of ornamenting in their braids. However, like Troy, it wasn't an acceptable style and again not seen as mature enough for the workplace. This was a problem for many African Americans because this meant that a part of their culture was not allowed to be seen and shown to others, which in turn made them assimilate to the white culture. These African American women were striving to be unique and that is why they got their hair braided except they ended up taking them out at a later age to get the job and status they want, which does not include braided hair. Number three, Black Klansman. This is Spike Lee's latest film, which was awarded for Best Adapted Screenplay at the Oscars this year. This film is about a black police officer in the 70s who infiltrates the KKK. The first scene captures a high angle shot of Ron Stallworth fixing his afro as he goes in for his interview at the police department. What this shows is that his confidence comes from his hairstyle, his natural fro. The afro, which is not usually seen on women, is represented by Patrice, who styles her hair in memory of coffee. She is one of Lee's best respected female characters, and it fits her character that she has a large afro hairdo. 
The hairstylist for Black Klansman, Lawanda Pierre, states she makes the Afro styles of the characters serve as a reflection of their personality and challenged the misconception behind the uniformity of Afro hairdos. That is why each character has a different style of Afro. Historically, the Afro has been critiqued and judged as it is unlike any other hairstyle that white people can have. The Afro showcases the nappy hair by combing and fluffing it out, which then makes it taller and voluminous. Culturally, the Afro indicates a person's African heritage by having their unique nappy hair shown in the most natural form. Number four, school days. In Spike Lee's long-awaited follow-up of his first film, She's Gotta Have It, 1988 film School Days centers around intra-racial differences between different college fraternities and sororities. The seemingly out-of-place musical number in the film that has the most intricate set design uses the main conflict of intra-racial differences, but describes that conflict by using hair as the center symbol. The girls sing about hair in a song called Good and Bad Hair. Don't you wish you had hair like this? Then the boys give you a kiss. Talk about nothing but bliss. Then you're gonna see what you miss. If a flash should land on your head, then I'm sure he'd break all his legs. Cause you got so much grease up there. Dear, was that a weave that you wear? And you're just a jig. Throughout the musical number, the women call each other jigaboos and wannabes. The name jigaboos meant to insult nappy hair, a prominent African feature. The name wannabes meant to insult their lack of representation of black heritage. Don't you ever worry about that, cause I don't mind being don't black. Try it. Because most of these students are first generation college students, representing their community is important. And to stray from that by changing their hair and straightening it is a sign of betrayal. Having a more white or European look to them allowed black women to get treated better in history, which is why that speaks to the betrayal. Like in school days when the wannabes straighten their hair to get the guys, it is not uncommon for straightened hair to be more acceptable in a more professional job setting. For example, when hair must be straightened for employment or for social mobility, it can be seen as assimilationists subscribing to dominant cultural standards of beauty. The women are dissimilating themselves from their black heritage to look more professional. Our honorable mention for this video is Bamboozled. Spike Lee's 2000 film centers around a man named Pierre Delacroix, who writes a satirical blackface comedy for television and it becomes an instant hit among white audiences. The first scene shows Delacroix shaving his head. For any race, hair is a defining feature for any human and symbol of who that person is. Thus, having a shaved head is like shaving a part of your culture or who you are away. However, a shaved head could signal redemption from the harsh chemicals once used. If conking, tight braiding, or straightening ended up ruining that person's hair, a shaved head could be a new start and their natural hair could take root once more.